$36 million an hour in interest from the American people. $36 million an hour in interest from the American people. My children, my two children, were born $86,000 in debt based on the national debt. Now, why am I going to take away from those children to give to somebody that is going to be born in 2030? It's not going to happen. So that was my decision. It was very easy. You know, you think about stuff like fear. Oh, the IRS is going to get you. They're going to take your stuff. It, that's not important to me. Stuff's not important to me. My children are important to me. I'm one of those mothers that will roll up her sleeves with one leg and try to whoop you if you mess with my children. And I think that a lot of mothers are like that. So this is what my decision was. And I went on and started educating people. One of the things that people ask me once I've made this decision and started talking about it, how are we going to run the country without the income tax? I don't know how much Dan got into it, but the Grace Commission report that Ronald Reagan put out in 1994, 84, sorry, says that none of the money collected in income tax goes towards running the country. But the bottom line is it's not going towards running the country, so you patriotic people out there, you've been fooled. Beardsley Rummel, he was Federal Reserve Chairman back in 1946, did a speech before the American Bar Association. The title of his speech was, Taxes for Revenue are Obsolete. Within the body of this report, he says that the taxes, the income taxes for redistribution of wealth. What is redistribution of wealth? What is that? That's taking from me that I've worked hard for and given it from somebody else to somebody else. Shouldn't I have the right to redistribute my wealth if I want to? Another question that they ask me is, how come I haven't heard this on TV <laughs> or on the radio or in the newspaper? Well, sweetie, the simple answer to that is the same people who own the television stations and the newspapers and the radio stations are the same people who are involved with the Federal Reserve. And here is a little statement that says that it only requires 5% ownership to significantly influence the media. Rockefeller is one of the original shareholders of the Federal Reserve. Uh, as early as 1963, the House Banking Subcommittee reported that Rockefeller, through Chase Manhattan Bank, controlled 5.9 percent of the stock in CBS and the bank and gained interlocking directorates with ABC. I went all the way through high school, all the way through college, all the way through testing for the CPA and all this Irish training and didn't hear about any of this. You think they want this information out here for you guys to eat up and chew up and find out what's really going on? I don't think so. Now. Another one. Why, why don't we just tell our elected officials about this? <sighs> and to make a really long story short, the We the People Foundation, the same people that put out this ad, put together a hearing. And these 40 researchers were going to ask the IRS and the DOJ these questions. And we're going to have this big meeting in Washington called the Truth and Taxation Hearings. Okay? So we got together with 537 questions. So we sent them the 537 questions so they could research and have the answers, and what did they do? They reneged on coming. They signed off on it, but they reneged on coming. So you all didn't get to hear the truth. We went on and had the hearings anyway, put it on CD, marched around Washington, giving it to all 535 congressmen and senators. Please look at this information. We got stupid responses back like, thank you for visiting our offices in Washington. The next time you come from Washington, come to Washington, please visit us again. They don't care. Your presidents don't care. Another one that they ask me, or they'll say something like, well, this just sounds like it's some kind of conspiracy theory. Y'all hear that a lot? OK. But tell me this, what's the difference between a conspiracy and a strategy? Don't you understand that this is all by design? All this black, white stuff. You're white, I'm black. You know, You're a Democrat, I'm a Republican. You know, y'all heard of divide and conquer before, right? Yeah. Why well, y'all letting, letting them do it to us? While I'm sitting up here arguing with this man about what his great, great, great granddaddy did to mine, there's this big old fence closing in around us. And while I'm sitting here wasting time and he's sitting here telling me why he doesn't know, we need to put our heads together and figure out how to get out of this fence that these people are building around us. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we got to be. Divide and conquer, we can't let that work anymore. It's been working all these years. Then we need to get together and understand. First of all, you need to understand what is going on with your money. You work hard. It's like we're on a hamster. We are a hamster on a wheel. This country started out with taxation without representation. Where are we now? How, how did we get back to where we started? We got lazy and comfortable. Get out in your comfort zone. 
I never tell people to file a tax return. I never tell them not to file. I never tell people to pay taxes, and I never pay, tell them not to pay. What I tell people is to do your own research, do your due diligence, and decide whether or not you're going to be a slave or get off the plantation. That's your choice. So in essence, you're wasting time. As long as you continue to feed the monster, the monster's going to grow. They're going to always have, they're going to laugh in your face. And any kind of cause that you have, anything that you're trying to do in your life concerning getting things back on track with our country, the way it's supposed to be, you're going to get laughed at because you continue to give them the money to do whatever it is they're doing to us. A lot of people don't care. A lot of people get the money taken out of their checks and they actually think they're getting, oh, I get back $3,000 every year. They don't take anything from me. I say, sweetie, look at your W-2. They took $14,000. They gave you back $3,000 of your own money. Oh. <laughs> but the point is, if each of us understands where we are, who we are, and tries to do something about it, then we're going to get somewhere. This is a great country, but it's off track. And who's going to get it back on track? Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>